Hi everyone, Mr. Bowtie here. Thank you so much for checking out my content and my channel. Now make sure you bang home that red subscribe button on YouTube so that way you can stay up to date on the latest content from around the area that you won't find anywhere else. And follow me on Twitter at MrBowtie1982. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. The long continuing odyssey of the 2020 Texas high school football season continues as TAPS finally allows their schools to get started, which means San Antonio Christian can finally open up their season as they take on Universal City Randolph. While the Lions have been waiting week after week after week to finally get started, the Rohawks are 2-1 and one on the season, coming off a blowout win over on the Air Force Base over Wallace Brazos out of the Houston area. This is their final non-district game before they open up district play in 3A Division I next week against Cole in the Military Bowl. The Lions, meanwhile, are coming off a 4-5 and five season last year. They have not had a winning season since the 2013 campaign, and they look to get their season started on the right foot. Speaking of guys who knew a thing or two about starting off on the right foot, their sacks head coach Henry Ellard, 16 years in the NFL, nearly 14,000 receiving yards, mainly with the LA Rams and the Washington Redskins. Let's check out all the action from the Lions' den. Randolph coach Pete West did not play in the NFL, but he was coaching his 275th game at Randolph. A win would put him over 500 at 138 and 137. He's the fifth longest tenured head coach in San Antonio high school football history. Both coaches so famous that people even carpool to get to the stadium. That's how intern Juliet Bunsen gets to the office every day, but make sure you wear your seatbelt. They got to see number 11 Lesrick Banks of the Rohawk Star on both sides of the ball and channeling his inner Brian London II, the Randolph alum who is the all-time leading tackler in Texas State football history. The theme of this game was the run setting up the pass for Randolph. Opening drive and Banks already ducking and dodging around line defenders 17 yards for a first down. Next three plays were also run plays moving the ball to the sacks 41. Play five of the drive, watch number 81 one John Allen. Defenders expected run and not play action. Allen ran behind all of them, caught the Henry Rowan Gardner-esque floater from Sam Girat, picked up a couple blocks and ended up in the end zone, 7-0 Randolph. We have a lot of counters. We do trick plays and stuff to confuse the defense. And it just sets up one of the runners to be open, you know. And then once we get down there, we progress down the field, it sets us up for a pass. It's all about the backs playing well. Them taking a lot of weight out of our shoulders. Our quarterback throws the ball well. We just do our best I can for our team. Um, in practice, all we do is block. We give our best effort. We are born for this. Second possession and the run set up the pass again for the Rohawks. Several running plays moved the ball into plus territory. Banks was the decoy previously. Now he is both a decoy and the target. Play action fooled four Lions defenders. Girat with another Rowan Gardner floater pass. This one to Banks picked up one block and he ran the rest of the way for the score. PAT failed, but Randolph up 13-0 after one. Three third down conversions on that drive led to the touchdown. Sacks did have some good drives in the game, but negative plays ended those drives. Quarterback Joel Allen found Evan Russell on the side of the end zone for the score, but it was called back by a holding penalty. The Lions ended up getting sacked out of field goal range and had to punt. Later in the quarter, Allen backed to pass, but the pointy object slipped out of his hand. Rohawks would recover to end another Lion drive. Ball was recovered by Brandon Glaspie. When you get that first game in, you got to work through the kinks and things like that. So. It's a starting point for us, is what I told our guys, and we just got to build from here. You know, like I said, they've had a couple of games under their belt, which can work to their advantage, but still we had some opportunities we didn't take advantage of. We put some drives together, which is important. We just got to learn how to finish the drive, and that's our next step, you know, going into next week. It's all about knowing what you got to do, know your roles. It's engraved in our head, all our coaches say it. Know what you got to do, and nothing will fail. Glaspie, though, didn't have time to celebrate because he had to go right back on offense. When Banks wasn't scoring, it was Colton Howard who did the trick. He had two touchdowns in the quarter of 76 and 25 yards to give the Rohawks a 34-0 lead at halftime. Third quarter was all about Banks channeling his inner BL2. He had a sack on defense and a pair of touchdown runs in the quarter of 12 and 64 yards. He finished with 132 rushing yards, three touchdowns, and a receiving score. The 
will be brighter days for the Lions, but on this night it was all Randolph as they flew past for a 48-0 win, outrushing Sacks 437-76. to On the play actions, it, I'm, I'm not really open. I'm just faking a run and dragging as many people as I can away. I saw a little bit of BL2 in you tonight, both on offense and defense. When I found out that he was like trying to go pro and he was doing so good in college, I knew that I had to be next up. I got to put forth the effort and be better than the people behind me. You know what I'm saying? The people before me. And I'm just trying to be the best I can. The Rohawks head into district play, taking on Cole next week in the Military Bowl, while Sachs will take on Antonian in game two of their season. Reporting from North Central San Antonio, I'm Greg Sherman.